Hey everybody, and welcome to Crazy Tech Lab, and we have another 140mm fan review for you today. Specifically, it is the Arctic P14 Slim PWM PST. But I know that I included this fan in my recent group test, but there was a bit of a problem because unbeknown to me, I actually received the original version of the Arctic P14 Slim and not the new version two. The new version two has something very, very different going on with the fan blades, and it actually has a ring that links all of the fan blades. Now that could potentially have some pretty significant um, improvements in terms of airflow and noise. And I can say now that this is a much better fan than the original, and I wish I'd been able to include it in the original group test. So what we'll be doing today is actually doing a standalone review of this new fan, comparing it to the original fan and also the other two 140 millimeter slim fans that are out there, namely the Silverstone Air Slimmer 140 ARGB and also the Johnsbo HF 1415. So both of those fans or all three of these fans or technically all four of these fans, seeing as there are technically two Arctic uh, 14 slims, uh, 140 millimeter slim fans. Um, all of them are actually really, really good. The Arctic, however, excelled in generating more airflow and cooling performance if you strap it to a heatsink or a radiator at specific noise levels, which is kind of one of the most important metrics out there. You want to get more airflow for a certain noise level. Now, the other fans did generate more airflow at their maximum speeds, which you might consider being more flexible if you just want to go for maximum airflow in certain situations. Lots of different reasons to buy each different fan. So I don't think there are any bad 140 millimeter fans out there right now, which is uh, unfortunately the same can't be said for the 120 millimeter fa uh, slim fans that are out there. There are some real shockers out there at the moment. So you definitely want to check out my 120 millimeter slim fan group test if you haven't already link to that link to that in the banner up above and the description down below. So we'll be running through the new Arctic fan in my usual suite of uh, tests and coming to some conclusions at the end. So if you found this video informative today, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on those notifications. If you found it particularly useful, then you can even send your thanks my way by buying me a coffee, sending me a donation, or otherwise sending your thanks using any of the links in the description down below. So don't forget to check those out. All of the fans featured and reviewed here today will be available in the links down below as well. And don't forget to check out my Amazon shop where you can check out all the best hardware that I have tested thoroughly here on the channel. So. That's it from the intro here today. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as well. Subscri subscribing to my channel just means a lot to have your support. And if you like and comment, just helps punch me through the algorithm and gets me noticed and allows me to keep on doing this channel, basically. So that's it from the introduction. Let's crack on with the review. So starting off with two graphs that usually sit at the end of a discussion like this, we've actually brought them forwards because I know that a lot of you won't want to see or read through all of the data that I've gone through over the next few minutes, and uh, you just want an at-a-glance view of which fan is actually best. So here we have the Silverstone Air Slimmer 140 ARGB still sitting at the top of the graph. It's pretty expensive though, which is why it doesn't get a particularly good value score at the bottom. So that value score is absolutely dominated by the art Arctic P14 Slim, um, and very good reason for that. It's by far the cheapest fan on test, and it also performs really, really well. So, the overall score though takes in takes into account other issue uh, or other factors such as how flexible the fan is in terms of maximum airflow, um, any extra features it has. Obviously, the Silverstone sitting at the top of the graph has um, screw types for both types of radiators you might want to fit it to. It's got RGB lighting, and it has that um, extra peak airflow to um, to offer up as well as um, some very very high marks in lots of other graphs as well so the arctic p14 slim pwm pst version 2 though does score a couple of extra points for better performance compared to the original fan it's quieter it offers more airflow at uh, specific noise levels and is generally a better fan thanks to the tweaking that arctic has done the John's bow, um, pretty much sitting exactly where it was in the group test, um, but now kind of level with the Arctic rather than just slightly above it in terms of the overall score because I've tweaked things and uh, added everything up again based on where they sit in the new graphs. So the John's bow is still a pretty good fan, um, especially if you need a white slim fan that also offers RGB lighting. Um, it's a pretty decent fan overall and you won't be disappointed with it. The original Arctic fan then, I'm sitting at the bottom of the graph because of that lower performance. 
So moving on to our core data now then, and we first of all have the airflow results at specific RPMs. And uh, as we can see here, if we look at the full speed graph first, um, the Arctic P14 Slim version two does uplift the airflow at the full speed, uh, which is exactly the same RPMs for both fans. It does see an, a fairly significant uplift. However, it's still not enough to match the John's Bow or the Silverstone air slimmer, uh, both of which offer significantly more airflow. Now, dipping back to the um, lower RPMs, uh, we still have a consistently higher airflow coming from the version two. So uh, when Arctic is saying you get the same airflow with both fans, I would probably disagree with that because you're getting significantly higher airflow with the new fan. Um, again, though, at 800 RPM, 1000 RPM and 1500 RPM, it's not quite able to match the uh, higher airflow fans on test. So moving on to the noise results now then, and at full speed, we have the Arctic P14 Slim version two, uh, shaving a few decibels off the P14 Slim PWM. Now the human ear generally perceives a halving or doubling of uh, noise every 10 decibels. So going down by three is generally not um, shaving off a whole load of noise in terms of what your ear can perceive, but it is still significant and is definitely picked up by my sound meter. So. The new fan design much, much quieter than the previous Arctic model and the uh, John's Bow and Silverstone way up there with 51 and 54 decibels each. 1500 RPM and it's pretty much the same for the higher airflow fans and again the Arctic version 2 is shaving off a few decibels off the, um, the older model and uh, 1000 RPM still the same way round at uh, 1000 RPM and 800 RPM for the two higher airflow fans, the John's Bow and the Silverstone. And here, the difference between the version one and version two of the P14 Slim from Arctic becomes less significant and is indistinguishable with my sound meter at 800 RPM. Moving on to the temperature results now then, and we have the Arctic version two outperforming the original version of the P14 Slim in every single test and by quite a significant margin at 1000 RPM as well. However, it's the Silverstone and John's Bow that offer the lowest temperatures thanks to their higher airflow although it didn't they didn't have it all their own way because the arctic p14 slim did manage to match the silverstone at 1500 rpm and was never more than a couple of degrees away now this is where it gets really really interesting because what we're doing here is actually focusing on the noise that each fan produces and limiting the airflow in accordance to the noise that it's making. So essentially a noise normalized test, uh, fixing each fan at a specific noise level. In this case, 45 dBA. And the reason why we've got 45 dBA is because uh, this was actually the maximum noise level that the Arctic uh, version two produced. Now the other fan, the older Arctic managed to get up to 47. But uh, unfortunately with this fan, we are limited to 45 dBA, whereas the other fans are actually trailing off at around 45 dBA. So a bit limited on the, um, the testing that we could do here, but it's very, very significant. Nonetheless, the Arctic P14 Slim offering a huge amount more airflow at 45 dBA than any other fan on test even compared to the original fans. So sticking at the same noise level, it's massively outperforming both the original P14 Slim, the John's Boat HF 1415 and the Silverstone. And we see a similar result with the CPU temperature as well. So the RPM readings, yeah, I mean, they're an easy way of uh, seeing how efficient is each fan is at a particular rotation. But in terms of your eyes and your ears, the only thing that you're gonna be noticing is uh, what the TP, what the CPU temperature is in whatever software you're reading it, and also the noise that's uh, that's being shoved uh, over towards your ears. So you're not really going to be looking at the RPM of the fan and being irritated or pleased by that. Um, you're far more likely to be um, irritated or pleased by the noise that that fan is producing. So that's what we're looking at here, and the 45 dBA CPU temperature for each fan. Um, has the Arctic P14 Slim at the top, shaving a degree off the P14 Slim version one, and uh, two degrees better than the Silverstone and three degrees better than the John's Bow. Moving on to the subjective sound quality then, and again, we've got pretty similar results for both of the Arctic fans. 
the uh, spinning at the, the exact same speeds, you're getting um, pretty much the same airflow at those speeds, maybe slightly more with the P14 Slim, but it doesn't seem to produce that much more noise as a result. So uh, pretty clunky way of doing things. It is subjective, uh, but it is basically what my ears are telling me in terms of the actual sound quality. So it's not to be confused with the actual noise level. It's the quality of the fan noise, whether there's a droning noise or clicking or anything like that. And the Arctic scores pretty highly here, followed by the Silverstone and the John's Bow, which just had slightly more airflow and slightly more tone to the noise. Um, finally, with the John's Bow with a definite tone. Um, but again, it's still pretty uh, scoring pretty highly with 8 out of 10 there. So we have two interesting graphs to look at uh, before we round off here. And first of all, we have the airflow and noise quality to price ratio. So that's the fan on the left. So basically here it's the airflow divided by the um, noise quality score and then um, basically pitching that against the price of each fan. So as we, do, as we would expect, the Arctic fans are going to do particularly well here because they're just a lot cheaper than the other two fans but also they do offer a pretty good uh, noise quality as well plus um, reasonable if not um, if not amazing airflow except if you noise normalize everything and then they really really do perform well so equally very very high scores here for both arctic fans and the arctic version 2 performing really really well the john's bow and the silverstone obviously a lot more expensive than the arctic and um, generally not performing quite as well when it comes to noise quality or the airflow that you get a bit at a particular noise level. So off over onto the right then we have the airflow to noise quality ratio. So that's disregarding anything to do with price and purely down to the amount of airflow that you get for the noise produced. So here we have the Silverstone winning out. Um, it produces a lot more airflow than the Arctic and uh, this is basically where the higher airflow fans are going to do um, are going to do slightly better. So the Arctic, yep, it's a lot quieter, but it really doesn't produce that much airflow at all um, compared to the other fans. Still enough to um, pump air through a radiator and keep a processor cool, though. So moving on to our final graph now then, and if you're primarily concerned about getting the most airflow for the least money, then this is the graph for you. So this is essentially how many dollars you'll have to spend to get one meter second of airflow um, according to my test system. So obviously not straight out of the fan, but we've actually got it coming out the other end of a radiator, so it takes into account static pressure as well. But in general, if you want the most airflow for the least cost, you wanna to look towards the top of this graph. So we have the Arctic P14 Slim, uh, version 2 at the top producing even more airflow for the same price than the original p14 slim and we have the john's bow coming up in third place uh, with a reasonably high price uh, compared to the arctic but generally performing very very well in terms of airflow um, the more expensive fan on test is the silverstone air slimmer 140 argb uh, so the much much higher price than the other fans on test means that even though it has the most airflow in most of the tests the higher price means that it actually scores the worst here in terms of costing you $13 per meter second of airflow. What do we make of the Arctic P14 Slim version 2 then? Well, first and foremost, I'll say just make sure you end up with the second revision of this fan with the ring around the blades because it is better both in terms of airflow and in terms of efficiency than the original uh, P14 Slim that we've got here. So the original fan was already pretty awesome. This one is exceptional in terms of its efficiency in, term, in terms of producing more airflow for less noise. Now, the only real downside to this thing is that it doesn't come with both sets of screws if you want to attach it to a radiator. The uh, Silverstone Air Slimmer 140 ARGB does. Um, just makes your life a bit easier so you're not having to hunt around for extra fans if you want to actually attach this thing to a radiator. Um, the Silverstone obviously including both M3 and 632 screw threads. 
uh, for the for attaching or screws, should I say, not screw threads, um, screws with threads of those sizes to both types of radiator that are out there at the moment. And even better is that it caters for both types of slim radiator as well, which are XSPC and Alpha Cool. So. Other things that I really wanted to stress is that this thing is really, really good up to a certain point, but the fact that it's producing a lot less airflow at maximum speed than the other fans does leave it as a, at a bit of a disadvantage. So even though the airflow has definitely improved with the new version with this ring attaching the edges of the fan blades, um, I would still maybe lean towards some of the other more powerful fans if you are basically gunning for maximum airflow in a very, very small space, or at least want the ability to ramp up that airflow on maybe hot um, hot days when you're having lengthy gaming sessions or like me editing videos for long periods of time where your GPU is used quite heavily for uh, 10 or 15 minute stretches. So again it depends on what situation you'll be you'll be doing these things in. Um, obviously if you if you're going for minimum noise with maximum airflow then this thing is absolutely the best fan here and uh, as a case fan it's excellent as well but even if you attach it to a radiator it is still cooling your typical CPU like the Core i5-10600K that I included in the group test, it's still managing to cool that more effectively at a specific noise level than the other fans. So a very, very good fan here from Arctic. The best option if you're looking to kit your small form factor PC out with fans for the lowest price because it is by far the cheapest fan here as well. So in terms of value and efficiency in terms of producing the most noise for the least airflow. So if you want to just stick it at a certain uh, noise level and get the most airflow out of it that you can, this is the fan to go for. Other fans also very, very good in this group test. So don't forget to check out the rest of the video and also my previous group test is to see which other fans you might want to be considering. Links to all of them are in the description down below as well. So that's it from me today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out all the links down below for other interesting content and I will be back very, very soon. Thank you.